Hi there. Today, let's talk about something that is a trend, something current in British society. And through talking about this topic, you will learn some great English language vocabulary and practice your understanding of spoken English, of course. This is a topic which is close to my heart, my value system, if you like. What is it? Well, it's a trend, that's T-R-E-N-D, and you can see it online in places like TikTok, beloved of very young people, much younger than me. And this trend is towards frugality. What's that word? Well, there's a noun, frugality, F-R-U-G-A-L-I-T-Y, but more easily understandable is the adjective, frugal. F-R-U-G-A-L. If you're frugal, it means that you try not to spend very much money. You're economical with your resources. You reuse things. You live without great expense. Being frugal means there's no waste or very little. And when you do buy things, you invest in things which are quality and so last a long time. That can mean overall you're spending much less because you're not replacing things. So this is a move away from the trend of showing how much you earn, how much money you have by having lots of things and having the latest things. Frugality is about using what you have, not spending more and about not being so much of a consumer. That's C-O-N-S-U-M-E-R. That's what many companies want us to be, consumers. So listen on to find out more about this trend. It may be that buying less makes you richer in lots of different ways. So this lesson may just change how you think about money, possessions and about what truly brings value to your life. Practice talking about money and lifestyle choices in British English with this podcast. And listen right until the end to discover how simple changes in your spending can lead to a more fulfilling life. Hello, I'm Hilary and you're listening to Adept English. We will help you to speak English fluently. All you have to do is listen. So start listening now and find out how it works. First of all, let me talk some more about the changes coming up at Adept English. I've mentioned before that we're going to offer you even more great English language listening content through subscription. What is subscription all about? Well, for £3.99 a month, you'll be able to subscribe to our premium content. That's around five euros or five US dollars per month. For this, you'll get eight exclusive podcast episodes only available to subscribers. At the start, this will be on the Spotify subscription service only. It's easy to use and you can unsubscribe at any time. If this is successful, we will expand the service. Subscription will then happen on other platforms too. So if you want to help me continue to create quality and thoughtful English language content for you, click on the link in the podcast description or take a look at the subscription FAQs. That's frequently asked questions on the Adept English website. Right back to today's topic, frugality. So why has it suddenly become the in thing to be seen to be spending less money, owning less rather than more. Well, with the rise in the cost of living, rises in the cost of housing, the cost of electricity and the doomy forecasts about the economy, the idea of spending less, buying less and saving more money suddenly seems very appealing to lots of people. Apart from frugality, the name used for this Underconsumption core. Consumption, C O N S U M P T I O N. That's the noun associated with the verb to consume, C O N S U M E. We might talk about consuming internet content, meaning we read things online. We might talk about consuming food, meaning we eat things. But here, what is meant, we are all consumers of the things which commercial companies want to sell to us. And as consumers, we are advertised to all the time, no more so than online and on your phone. Companies trying to sell us things. In the West, we live very much in a consumer society based on capitalism. So this new frugality 
is something of a reaction to all of this. And it doesn't make sense to waste your money or live beyond your means. Living beyond your means means spending more money than you earn or than you can afford to. I can get on board with this. Another element to it, it's more eco, that's E-C-O or ecological, to not always be buying new things. The developed world needs to change the way in which it consumes resources. It's wrong for us to continue to be a throwaway society. For many years now, I have preferred to buy my clothes second hand. And I make a point in furnishing my house of choosing second hand furniture wherever I can, rather than new. I'm not talking here sofas, carpets or mattresses, but pretty much everything else. I like proper wooden furniture. That's the stuff that lasts. For one thing, if you buy it secondhand, it's cheaper and it's better made. It's more robust, it looks better and it lasts longer. To me anyway. But more important, it's a form of recycling. With the clothes, rather than people binning clothes that they've finished with or they don't want anymore, they sell them, resell them on Depop or eBay. And the clothes have a second life. Many of the clothes I buy are new with tags or new without tags, meaning no one else has worn them anyway. And it's just the same with furniture. I like old furniture, even if it's got knocks and bangs. It comes with a history and with a character all of its own. Even the rug in my lounge, it's a large Afghan rug, which I think is really beautiful. Its age, estimated to be around 50 years old when I bought it about five years ago. And it will probably last another 50 years, longer than me. That's great. And I like it so much. It's a traditional Afghan design. I shouldn't need to buy another rug like that. And when I'm no longer here, it will pass on to family members who might want it. Much better than buying a nylon or a polypropylene rug and replacing it every few years. With clothes, buying second hand means that I can afford better quality, both in their design and their label, but also in the quality of the material they're made from. And manufacture of cotton is costly ecologically. Cotton needs a lot of water. So if I wear cotton clothes that someone else has finished with or bought and never worn, I'm ensuring that they have a longer life that the cost to the environment in their manufacture is made more worthwhile. And meanwhile, I'm not being such a consumer. I'm not buying new clothes and causing new clothes to be made. This simpler, don't buy anything you don't need and can't justify rule seems to me to sit comfortably with the life where the food you eat starts with simple basic ingredients. You aren't dependent upon some branded product in a supermarket for what you eat. And when I look at my washing line, the clothes hanging there, some of them have been around for quite a few years. And I like to quote the English actress, Sheila Hancock, now 90 years old, a bit of a national treasure. She took a stance beyond a certain age that she wasn't buying any new clothes. I have enough already she said. She once said in an interview in the Daily Telegraph, I hate clothes shopping from the depths of my soul. I went into Topshop once and I thought I was going to die. She makes me laugh. I don't feel that negatively about clothes shopping, but I am committed to the recycling idea. Sheila Hancock is one of those very admirable and likeable people who have got to the age where they feel that they can speak their mind. And this whole trend is also about the idea of buying quality goods, quality products, ones that last, as opposed to products which are disposable or throwaway. Disposable, D-I-S-P-O-S-A-B-L-E, means that you use something once or twice and then you throw it away. It then sits in landfill, a rubbish tip, and possibly takes up to a thousand years to decompose. According to an article in the New York Times, 92% of our carpets are made of plastic. They end up in landfill when we get rid of them and take hundreds of years to decompose. There's also the idea of staying in your own lane, which means no longer trying to keep up with friends or people you know who might have more money than you. They have something new, so you feel you have to have it too. The end of this. 
I recall an advertising campaign some years ago which said, Embarrassed by your mobile phone? Time to upgrade. The idea being that if your mobile phone isn't brand new, you ought to feel embarrassed about that or ashamed. I don't really see it as a hardship that my iPhone is an iPhone 12. I'm so lucky to have one. That's not me being deprived. And I've no reason to upgrade. I don't even know what number iPhones are on now. And I like my eight-year-old car. And I recognise that many people have cars much older than that. My sister in France has a Berlingo that's done well over 200,000 miles. And it's 25 years old. There is dignity in that old car. It might be large and ugly, but it is worthy of respect. It's still going and may well go for another few years. So what else are people doing in the spirit of underconsumption core? Certainly avoiding unnecessary purchases, not buying things you don't need, ignoring all those marketing messages. The advice is don't get pulled into buying things you don't need. Decide what you need before you go shopping and just stick with that. And if you must splurge for enjoyment, set a limit, set a budget beforehand. That's the verb to splurge in English, S-P-L-U-R-G-E or the noun a splurge. To splurge means to indulge in spending money extravagantly or on luxury items that you don't really need. If you have to, set a budget. Also hand in hand with this new frugal approach to life, have a good handle a good understanding of your finances. If you spend time analysing what you spend each month, it can be quite sobering. It can bring you right back down to earth. Really looking at where your money goes can make you think. Could you be spending on more worthwhile things or saving instead? I like this topic. I may say more on it in future podcasts. But let me know what you think. Does spending the money you've earned on nice things that you feel you deserve still feel very rewarding? Or are you choosing to live a more frugal life? Let us know. I'd be fascinated to hear. Enough for now. Have a lovely day. Speak to you again soon. Goodbye. Thank you so much for listening. Please help me tell others about this podcast by reviewing or rating it. And please share it on social media. You can find more listening lessons and a free English course at adeptenglish.com.